Good morning students. Today I will show you one pelvic viscera and this pelvic viscera there are uterus, urinary bladder, rectum but I will show you right now the urinary bladder. The position and situation of urinary bladder may vary. Vary means the urinary bladder it is present in the lesser pelvis but when it is distended with urine it becomes abdominal or abdominal pelvic. And uh, urinary bladder lies in front of the rectum in male and in front of the uterus in female. So, when the rectum is full and uterus it is also uh, gravid, the position of the urinary bladder may be changed. So, the position and its uh, situation may be changed depending upon the surrounding structures uh, whether they are uh, loaded or empty and also whether the urinary bladder it is uh, uh, distended with ur urine or it is empty um, depending on that its position and location also changes. Let us see what are the surfaces and borders of the urinary bladder. This is urinary bladder and it is empty now but when it will be full it will be over shaped. Now it is tetrahedral that means it should have four borders and there are four surfaces. This surface it is a superior surface and each side there are two borders, two lateral border and here is the entrance of the ureter on both sides, ureter. So, if you join a line between the openings of ureter on both sides, this will make the posterior border and inferiorly there are two surfaces. This is one inferolateral left interlateral right and in between these two this border is called the anterior border. So, all together we got four borders anterior border here, here in between the two inferolateral surface, two lateral border and one posterior border. So, four borders surfaces superior surface it is concave, two inferolateral surface right and left and behind the posterior border is the base here, here is the base, Can I am turning the bladder, this is the base or behind the posterior border is a base or posterior surface, also called the fundus of the urinary bladder. So, superior surface to inferolateral surface and fundus or base or posterior surface. Then it is apex, opposite to the base is the apex, this is apex. From the apex, this ligament extending from the apex to the umbilicus. Embryologically, it was urecus. The remnant comes median umbilical ligament, this one. And it is covered by the fold of peritoneum. Then it is called the median umbilical fold. So, median umbilical fold is the fold of peritoneum. Median umbilical ligament is the remnant of urecus. Urecus is a part of the hindgut. If the urecus persists, the urine may, may flow from the bladder up to the umbilicus and drops from the umbilicus. It is called patent urecus. But normally what happens? The urecus it is obliterated to form the median umbilical ligament. Now we know the different surfaces and borders and I have to hold the bladder in anatomical position. So, this is the anatomical position of the urinary bladder, this one. So, that this surface it is concave and upwards superior surface base posteriorly and to some extent inferiorly like this and two inferolateral surface this finger is on the two inferolateral surface. So, this is the anatomical position of urinary bladder. Then the peritoneal relation of the urinary bladder. Here you will get the peritoneum. Peritoneum covers the superior surface of the urinary bladder and it comes to the posterior surface in the upper part in case of male. But in the female this peritoneum covers the superior surface then it reflected to the uterus forming the uterovesical pouch here. So, in male it is to some extent extended in the upper part of the posterior surface, but in female it stops at the level of the posterior border then reflected to the uh, uterus forming uterovesical pouch. But this surface, inferolateral surface 
of both sides they are non peritoneal not covered by the peritoneal then what we can see in the base or posterior part and this part is the hard or thick this is called the prostate so this is the male specimen and here by the base ends at this level inside there is a internal urethral orifice or surrounded by the circular muscle called internal urethral sphincter mechanism inside and posteriorly in the base here you can see the three structures this is one of both sides this is one of both sides and ureter on both sides this ureter extending from the renal pelvis from the kidney and it is having uh, mainly three parts pelvis of ureter then abdominal part and a very big part total length of ureter about 25 to 30 cm and when it descends downwards it causes one important artery in case of female particularly that is uterine artery which is about 2 cm from the supravaginal part of the cervix and the ureter opens inside the urinary bladder passing through the muscular part of the urinary bladder and this intramural part or intravesical part of the ureter about 1.5 to 2 cm and this part is the most constricted part of the ureter. Sometimes you are asked what is the constriction of ureter. Uh, there are three constrictions, one at the pelvic ureter junction where the anal pelvis ends and the ureter starts and second one when the ureter crosses the pelvic brim and third one is the intravesical part which is the most constricted part of these three and stone may lodge in this most constricted part of the ureter and then come to these two structures this is the vas deferens of both sides this vas deferens it starts as a continuation of the tail of the epididymis these two vas deferens and it runs through the superficial inguinal ring then through the inguinal canal then deep inguinal ring then it comes to the posterior surface or base of the urinary bladder and here at the terminal part it is dilated. This dilated part of the vas deferens is called the ampulla. So the distal part and the proximal part where it starts in these two parts this vas deferens to some extent tortuous but the remaining part is not tortuous and here the vas deferens joins with this seminal vesicle. These two are seminal vesicles. These two. The length of seminal vesicle it is about 5 to 10 centimeter and diameter 3 to 5. And the capacity of the seminal vesicle is about 13 ml or 13 milliliter. So, this duct of the seminal vesicle and this ampulla of the uh, vas deferens they join together to form another duct that duct is called the ejaculatory duct here this is ejaculatory duct. So if you are asked how the ejaculatory duct is formed the answer will be it will form by the duct of the seminal vesicle and the vas deferens and the length of ejaculatory duct is about 2 centimeter and it opens inside the prostatic urethra at the level of the verumentanum of the prostatic urethra. This is prostate. So, inside prostate you will get the urethra. Urethra starts from the internal urethral orifice inside and it runs within the prostate as prostatic urethra. So, on the posterior wall of the prostatic urethra you will see here you will get the opening of the ejaculatory duct on both sides and the site of that uh, part of the prostate is called the verumentana. So, altogether you got the vas deferens of both sides which is about 45 centimeter in length and this is seminal vesicle of both sides and these two from the ejaculatory duct of both sides. So, there are two openings one from right one for the left two ejaculatory duct inside the prostatic urethra at the level of the verumentanum. Now, again I am holding the whole thing in the anatomical position in this way.